Hi, Ben here from Trident Fly Fishing. We're here on the Big Hole River in Montana spay casting for trout. When I thought to myself, should I be using a spay rod or a switch rod for this water? And that's actually a question that we get all the time from our customers. And I thought rather than explain it to you myself, I'd let Tom Larimer from G. Loomis, who's a master spay caster and a master spay instructor, explain it because he'll do a lot better job than I can. Hey guys, today we're talking about really the differences between a spay rod and a switch rod. There's a lot of confusion out there, and especially for those of you that are getting into this sport new. I think sometimes we sort of have some you know, presumptions that, well, maybe a switch rod is going to be a little bit easier for me to get in the sport. So today I want to kind of just walk you guys through kind of the main difference between these two and, and really kind of where they're applicable so that you guys can, uh, you know, make sure you get the right rod for where you're going to fish. So let's just look at a, a true spay rod to start with. So right here I've got a 13 foot 7 weight G. Loomis Asquith. This is our newest rod that just came out and it is legendary. If you go back in time and you look at spay rods, you know, when they, uh, when they first evolved back in, in Scotland on the River Spay in the late 1800s, they were 16 to 20 feet long, made out of green heart wood. They were like four or five pounds. I mean, you had to be a, a stud to cast these things. Huge cry from where we're at today with these really, really light rods. So the average spay rod, if you're just getting into this, uh, you know, basically a 13 foot seven weight is going to allow you to fish anywhere from the Great Lakes all the way up to, uh, let's just say, Canada. It does just about everything. And when we talk about a spay rod the, and the difference between a switch rod, the biggest difference here, guys, is really about how it flexes. So in a spay rod, and, and when you look at a spay cast, the rod is staying relatively loaded through the whole cast. So typically, you've got a fairly powerful tip and then the rod likes to flex more down into the mid into the butt and that allows you to kind of sustain the load as you're making the spay cast. The thing is if you try to overhead cast one of these it's not going to do real well. The tip's going to be so stiff that it'll actually open up the loop a little bit on you and it's just going to kind of throw your timing off. So these are not good for overhead casting. We really use these for, spay, for true spay casts and of course you know they come in a wide range of lengths and sizes. So that's really what a spay rod is. When we start looking at a switch rod and, you know, admittedly, when switch rods came out to begin with, it, it was a really, really good idea. There was one big, big problem, and that was there wasn't very good lines for them. So what a switch rod is, if you think about, this is very similar to almost what your 9 foot 5 weight would be as far as the taper of the rod. It's a little softer in the tip, and then it gets stiffer through the butt. And so it allows you to actually make not only a spay cast, but an overhead cast. And what you'll find in, in switch rods is, is that when you're designing a rod, you really have to lean one way or the other. You either make it more kind of a spay taper, if you will, that'll allow it to kind of hold the, the loop or the, the tension on the rod, or you make it more overhead taper so you can actually pick up a line and aerialize it and cast it. So most switch rods tend to lean more towards kind of this switch taper, a little softer in the tip, more power down here. So with that being said, they're versatile, but they're not always the best tool if you're a new spay caster. Because it's a little faster in the butt, your timing has to be a little bit better. Uh, but, um, you know, if you're a little bit more of an intermediate or advanced caster, especially with the new lines that we have out there, that really kind of helps slow the rod down, helps you feel it, so it works really well. Now, one thing about a switch rod, I said spay rods aren't good for overhead casting. These guys are great, and, and from a versatility standpoint, um, you know, I think that what we're finding now is people using these things in tons of different fisheries. So, you know, obviously salmon and steelhead, these have been used for a long time. We're here in Montana today fishing the big hole. It's a great rod. This is an 11 foot five weight GLX. Perfect rod for swinging streamers or soft tackles on this. And so those of you that live in smallmouth country, these things are really fun on, on, on smallmouth rivers that have the size to spay cast for them. There's a lot of people using them in saltwater applications off beaches, up in the Puget Sound, for example, or even down in, in the south in the Texas coast. They're throwing for sea trout with them. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think that the big takeaway from this video, guys, is if you're a new spay caster, probably want to start with a true spay rod. It's going to just open up the learning curve for you. It's not going to be quite as hard. Get to the switch once you really master it. <clears throat> if you're looking for a tool that has a little more versatility, you know, you might need to do some overhead casting, but you're going to be fishing some smaller rivers. 
then I think the switch rod is really applicable. So that's really the basics between spay and switch. I hope that helps you.